Free agents, they're the underappreciated heroes in career mode and the football world. They're just out here, down at the job center every day of the week, scrambling on the phone with their agents on deadline day to finalize a deal that eventually collapses at the seams, and before you know it, they're languishing in the free agents list once more. Those days are no more, scrap that, because Sir BCHD is ready to give the unemployed ballers a career. Welcome to the free agents only rebuild challenge. Let's just get this clear, right? There are usually four types of free agents. Number one, the proper free agents that load up every time you start up a brand new career mode. They're always there whether they have a face or not. Secondly, now there are free agents that are randomly assigned to teams. I don't know what this reason is. Either their team has been removed or they've moved to a team that is not yet added in FIFA and they just get randomly assigned to a club anywhere around the world. They technically qualify as free agents in the career mode database, but when you load up a new save, that just isn't the case. Thirdly, there are the fake slash unlicensed players with no face and yeah, they aren't real. They're fictional characters, pretty much. They also can fall into that category known as free agents assigned to a different club in your career mode save. Regens and players that get released can also have the potential to spawn in the free agent sector. We've all put it under one umbrella and that is basically the criteria of players we are able to sign in today's challenge. We're venturing off into one of the hardest leagues in the world, the championship, the second division of England and why Brentford, you ask? I never really wanted to start this rebuild in the pre or any top division in the world from the bounce. The London Outfit squad definitely have solid foundations we can build upon and are the perfect hub for free agents far and wide to come join. We're going to welcome them with open arms. I'm keen to find out today how far can we take a full team of free agents in career mode. As a collective, they're going to be curated from all those four types of free agents we listed, remaining also in conjunction with this Brentford squad. And here is the type of team we're working with in the championship. I believe they are pushing for promotion or or at least a playoff spot in real life. It's these two, the wingers, that really catch my attention. Ben Rama and Mbembo. Mbembo? Yeah, Mbembo. I think I got that right the second time. A young 23-year-old Watkins is leading the lineup top, so a very youthful front three. As we move on into the midfield, this team is very young and also has the quality to back it up. You'll love to see it. De Silva, a young English talent. That is going to be interesting to see how these guys merge in with the free agents that we're about to pick up. Raya in goal is also a very decent option. Whilst we make our way onto the bench. They've got depth aplenty and in the championship you need as many players as possible to compete. We're targeting Premier League promotion in our first stint. However, we've got two transfer windows ahead of us. Two opportunities to pick up as many and as quality free agents as possible. Let's get straight into it. It's going to be a fascinating one. The deeper we go, the more seasons we get into this, we could see some insane regens, some players released from their clubs. I'm intrigued to see what the future can hold and who our potential transfer targets can be. I present to you our first acquisition of the free agents only rebuild and we have the Polish playmaker Sebastian Szymanski, a player which I've had so many positive experiences with in FIFA 20. He's a free agent that falls into that category of randomly assigned to another team. He arrives from Boca Juniors for 4.25 million pounds. Yes, I know that technically classifies him as not a free agent, but he is actually stated as a free agent on so FIFA and in the databases. So don't come after me with your pitchforks down in the comments. I've signed him as a free agent in a video before. I believe it was in my Southford rebuild. He turned out to be a gem, an absolute stud. So he's going to join us here at Brentford City. With our second free agent signing, it's pretty much the same situation with Szymanski. Wilmar Barrios, the Colombian CDM. He used to play for a team in FIFA. He transferred to Zenit St. Petersburg. And you guys know that the Russian leagues aren't in FIFA 20. And therefore, he hasn't been removed from the game. He's just been classified as a free agent. And he gets randomly assigned. I believe in this career mode, he was from RC Strasbourg. And we picked him up for 16.3 million pounds, the Colombian 25 year old. He still qualifies as a free agent. We've just had to spend a little bit of cash on the first two. Right here, the next three unraveled. There is an interesting story behind these three. First of all, they've randomly been assigned. They are technically classified as free agents yet again. Let me stress that. However, considering the Uruguayan players, I think their national team is unlicensed. Therefore, they have a bunch of fake Uruguayan players. This squad might be dominated heavily by Uruguayan talent. South America's taken over right here as Agdido Maestre Chetino. He's an 82 rated set back 27. He is literally a fictional player. He doesn't exist. EA have made him up just like all the Brazilian unlicensed players as well. Uruguay have their fair share. And we're going to add to the collection right here with the cam Jose Maria Sildero. Unlicensed fake players that fall into those two free agent categories. He's another 82 rated player. Two ballers we've picked up there. 
and we have Mustafa Mohammed. He is not a fake player. He's actually existing in real life right now. He plays in the Egyptian Premier League. To my knowledge, I've no idea why the Egyptian is still in the game or hasn't been removed yet. EA have decided to keep him languishing in the free agents. We've given him a job. He's only 21 and he seems quite promising, showing great potential. He looks like a unit in up front. Just look at that chest. He's ready to do battle in the championship. I'll tell you that much. We have Jose Maria Sildero. Yeah, they don't exist in real life. So that's basically what you have to go off them appearance wise. And they're wearing fake boots. So you know we're in deep trouble already. He can actually play right mid as well. Four star skill moves, four star weak foot with the traits of power, free kick, flare, long shot taker, technical dribbler, the 27 year old. I don't know who EA is based this off, but he is looking absolutely fire at the moment. With Chetino, he's basically the B tech Diego Godin, still at 27. So he's in the prime time of his career and he is an exceptional center back, especially at championship level. Unfortunately, the transfer news don't cover free agent moves. So that's a bit of an L to take. It's a hard pill to swallow. We're going to have to cover all the technical free agent signings. This is our first one off the bat. We have the Slovenian center back, Miha Blazic. In comparison to the fake Shetino, he doesn't really live up to the quality. Nonetheless, I kept him my promise. I'm going to give these free agents a job. I want them to continue playing football and Miha is going to be one of many receiving employment in this video. No free agent goes begging. All free agents are going to be paid. We are just handing out money. This feels like a Mr. Beast video right now. Damn, I see you, Arsenal. Looks like they're also trying to get involved in the free agent only rebuild right now as they have signed up Marvin Bajano, the left back from Bolivia. Meanwhile, we pick up the B-Tech backer Yoko. It could be his long lost brother. There might be a connection there as the Ivorian right back Mamadou Bagayoko signs for Brentford. Now we have a Bayer Leverkusen duo to feast your eyes amongst right here as the free agents keep rolling in right now. They qualify for those free agents assigned to a different squad and we pay 5.5 million for the Aussie centre-back Trent Sainsbury. Ex into Milan Loney and he started off FIFA 20 or FIFA 19 at PSV. The reason for his free agency in FIFA 20 is because now he is playing for Maccabi Haifa. And yeah, you've guessed it, the Israeli outfit, they're not in FIFA. I don't see a day where an Israeli club can be in FIFA. I know all you UK guys, don't confuse him with the supermarkets. Alongside Sainsbury was Liam Miller, the Canadian left winger who was actually at Liverpool this season. He's been in Liverpool's academy for a while. So FIFA claimed that Liverpool have actually released him or dropped him on April 10th. I don't know if there's any real substance to that. Let me know down below, Liverpool fans. Look what we have to weigh up right here. We have the potential to sign both the Uruguayan fake player who joins a, a two Uruguayans at this club, Luis Roberto Dalvez, currently assigned to Montpellier in France. He'll cost us around 24.4 million pounds, but is classified as a free agent. And Artem Dzyuba, Russia's World Cup hero in 2018, the big man up top. Just like him and many other Russians are no longer in FIFA due to Zenit not being in the game. You know what? Why not? I think they'll both work. I'm going to sign them both up. We are going top heavy. We're just signing as many free agent players we can get our hands on. It's more double trouble action for your eyes to feast upon right here as we have two coming from Columbus Crew. First off the bat is Milos Dejenek. He's an Australian centre back, 25 years old, 74 overall. What's with all these Aussies being free agents? To be fair, it's not really his fault. He plays for Red Star Belgrade, the Serbian club. Instead of removing the Australian from the game, he is eligible to be a free agent in FIFA and he got randomly assigned to Columbus Crew. Alongside the addition of Rodolfo Pizarro, the Mexican cam left mid and center mid, the first player in this whole team to actually have a face scan. His addition to Columbus Crew makes a bit more sense because he now plays for Inter Miami FC, David Beckham's new franchise club in the MLS. They're not in FIFA. I don't think they're getting added into FIFA 20, by the way. They'll definitely be in FIFA 21 though, but for now, he is a free agent and we've picked him up for 15.4 million pounds. Take a glance at all these free agents who have come to join us. We're doing business. We're doing the Lord's work out here, lads. One of our last positions we needed to fulfill and sign a player in was the goalkeeping spot. And we've gone after a free agent known as Daniel Normo. The Bulgarian, 21 years of age, 57 overall. Yeah, he's not the best. Don't worry though, I have faith. At 21, he's got time on his side and with dynamic potential, who knows? We'll keep our eye on him and I actually can't believe I've gone out and signed this guy. It's only because I recognize him, Alexander Tonev. Now, if you're a Villa fan, Frosinone fan like myself, or just have witnessed this man play football, you will know he's the most useless professional I have ever seen. I think this is the only time I'm going to slate a footballer and it's going to be now. If you've seen him play, his game is focused around 
dribbling and taking a long shot. That is all he's got in his locker. A long shot, a bit of speed and pace on him, but the rest, he's just a useless player. He's selfish. He doesn't pass the teammates. He's a terrible excuse for a footballer, and let's just say I'm not surprised he's a free agent nowadays. He's known for blasting balls into Rose Z. Just search up some of his highlights on YouTube. I'm sure you'll be entertained. Matthias Norman falls under the category and the curse of moving to Russia, getting removed from FIFA, and just qualifying for the free agents list. He gets automatically assigned to Al Hilal in the game. They've accepted a 4.1 million pound bid for the Norwegian midfielder and the ex-Brighton player, 23 years of age. He's got a face scan as well. These player face scans are just coming out the wazoo. At 72 overall, he's got a very decent chance in starting in that midfield three. He's joining many, many fellow free agents and I'm sure he's going to feel right at home. It's the grandstand finale to season one's transfer window right here. We've got two free agent deals and we also have a free agent player that was assigned to this Turkish side. It's the South African left back, a position where we hadn't signed a player in yet and it's Safiso Halanti, the 29 year old left back arriving for 800k. Meanwhile, I've signed up a bit more goalkeeping competition, Bandra Ali Sanagre. I feel like he's been a free agent on FIFA for like a few iterations now. I can remember him from a few games back. I don't know what the deal is with these two and we have Tan Long who plays in the Chinese second division. We've decided to invest in a bit more experience in the side and get some of the veterans involved. A large squad filled with quality and depth right here. This is our starting 11 with Pizzato, Dezuba and Szymanski leading the line as the front three. In the midfield three, it's Chetino Sainsbury being the centre back partnership and it's Halanti Bagayoko on the wing back areas and Sanagre will be our number one. With the squad now relishing in a four star rating, we've taken Brentford with these free agent transfer deals to a new level and I think Premier League promotion is definitely on the cards. Well then, off we trot. I did not expect that to be that easy. Brentford in conjunction with all those free agents we brought in over the summer, we have racked up 112 points first on the table, championship champions. We get that glorious Premier League promotion alongside Fulham. I don't assume we did all too well in the FA Cup. I want to actually check where do we get knocked out. Round 3, Man City 4-0. That's probably what we got in store for us in Season 2. Cairo Cup, surprisingly, we made it all the way to the Round 4. It was a 4-1 elimination to Manchester United. Now to check in on our top performers, who was our highest goal scorer? And it was Brian Mbwembo. I keep calling him Mbembo. I don't know why. His name's Mbwembo. I gotta, I gotta try and get used to that. Nonetheless, the Frenchman, I knew he was gonna be a crucial part in our squad. These two wingers, Ben Rama and Mbwembo, they could quite possibly be playing for Premier League sides next season, so I wouldn't be surprised. Brentford have got some stars on their hands and they've been our best performers with 45 goal contributions in 52 matches. What a season by the young French wonder kid. Who needs Mares when you've got Saeed Ben Rama as we move down to Jose Maria Sildero with 13 goals. 13 assists, perfectly balanced with 26 goal contributions. We have Artem Dezuba. What's with all these balanced stats? Eight goals, eight assists for the Russian. Rodolfo Pizarro also had a season to ride home about with 19 goal contributions, 11 assists and eight goals. And then Luis Roberto Dalvez with seven goals off the bench. We have Oli Watkins who kind of took a bit of a backseat this season considering all the strikers we brought in. Shadino from center back, the Uruguayan with five goals. As we move on down, the young Egyptian Mustafa Mohamed with three goals. Simansky not getting much game time, not getting any game time as a matter of fact. Hopefully we can turn that around next season as he's one of my favorite wonder kids in FIFA 20. Well, Operation Free Agents is a go. Some of them are already representing their countries internationally. And I can't wait to see where this next season takes us in the Prem. I'm going to assume we're in for a relegation dogfight. We're in for a pretty good scrap at the bottom end of the table. All our hopes basically rest on the laurels of who gets put into that free agents. If we get like the best regen in the world to somehow be spawned into the free Free agents, wet your end, but we have to rely on that free agents category to really lift us. Upon my scouring of the globe, high and wide of the free agents category, I was able to find only one player that would be suitable for us to sign, and we have Peter Wallace, the 18 year old goalkeeper. He must be a regen, he's just randomly appeared in the free agents. I've got no idea who he is. He's 65 overall, already at 18. He could be a future number one in between the sticks. And as we head into our Premier League survival campaign, we are signed 
lining up Wallace from Wallace and Gromit. For 1k a week, the 65 rated youth prospect is going to arrive at our ranks. I don't know how much that's going to help us throughout this season. However, in the long term, this one might pay off. Yeah, it's a complete contrast to our first transfer window involved in this free agents rebuild. Only one player in. We got one player out because his release clause got activated. He's not a free agent, so he's going to head out the door. You might think, hey, that's nowhere near enough for Premier League survival, but I think we did enough investment. We played our cards right in season one, so in reality, we should be future-proof for the season ahead. Now it's do or die. Can Brentford's free agents survive in the Prem? If you can't call this the great escape, I don't know what you can because... What? That is the craziest relegation race I have ever seen in my life. Besides Stoke City, who is dead and bottom, we have three teams on 27 points, Watford and West Brom, and then it's Bournemouth, Crystal Palace right above us with 28. Even Aston Villa could have got relegated with 30. We survived with a skin of our teeth. The opposite end of the spectrum, it is Liverpool on top with 102 points, Man City, Spurs, and Arsenal round up the top four. We've secured Premier League football for season three. Nonetheless, in round three of the FA Cup, we lose 2-0 to Newcastle. It's another top dog elimination in the Carabao Cup. We suffer a 1-0 defeat in round 3. Now to find out who are the absolute heroes that saved us from the depths of the championship once more. We have Artem Dejuba, our massive Russian hitman up top. No one got double figures for goals or assists this season, but he was the closest to it with 9 goals, 32. And the Russians still bagging them in. Brian Mbuemo still with a lackluster campaign to back up for season 1. The Premier League's a step above and if you can't cut the mustard, you can't get those same goals and assists. Rodolfo Pizarro with 5 goals and 5 as the Mexican with a solid season 10 goal contributions. On the other hand, Jose Maria Soldero still proven to be one of our most consistent and reliable Uruguayans and it's Sebastian Szymanski with 7 appearances, 4 goals and 2 assists. The pole is slowly starting to show his quality. It's yet another Uruguayan, Luis Roberto Dalvez, our answer to Luis Suarez, some would say. And a Mustafa Mohamed off the bench with 2. It's a steep decline to back up season 1's star performances for Saeed Ben Rama. Definitely not our Mares in the Premier League. More of a B-Tech Mares when it comes to the top flight with two goals and one assist in 30 appearances. It was Wilmar Barrios from CDM, our Colombian captain with two goals and four assists. Depending on the free agents available to us at the start of season three, I just think we got to aim for Premier League survival once more. But I'm not going to expect much coming out of the free agents department. I feel helpless trying to rely on it, but it's just the rules of the challenge. Don't hate the player, hate the game as we head on into season three as massive underdogs. So our GTN scout, he must know the go. For some reason, we're getting recommended all these young free agents. Honestly, I love his work. He's a godsend, to be fair. I don't know if these guys are regens or just randomly spawned fake free agent talents. Nonetheless, I'm a fan of a few of these and I'm looking to sign them up to this free agents rebuild as we could have some exciting young prospects on our hands. You can bet your bottom dollar that we acquired every single free agent that was recommended to us because surprise, surprise, they were the best on offer. We all know our aging striker problem in up top to Juba's about to retire. We've got some 30-year-old ballers in the club, so we need some youth injection. And it was Mohamed Brat. He is currently the best player out of the bunch, showing great potential as well. The 19-year-old Frenchman, 69 overall, valued at 2 mil. He's a brand new acquisition alongside the Bosnian LV Milicevic. Milicevic valued at 1.1. He's an exciting prospect, so that is some very decent signs. We did pick up a youthful centre-back showing great potential. Samuel Varela Martin, make sure you have your guesses in the comments down below. Who are these regens? Keep in mind, we're only three seasons in, so whose regens could they possibly be? Make sure you have your guess. In our left back, maybe, you never know, Marcelo's regen. Estavo Daniel Alves showing great potential at 64 overall. You love to see it because we definitely do need a youthful wing back to fill in that role. As we finish off with Callum Crookside, another showing great potential youth academy prospect, 63 overall. As expected, we did more business than last season with five new signings. Still no money spent, of course, because this is the free agents challenge. We are going to pull a few strings here and cheat. This is free agents only territory, baby. This is how our starting 11 shapes up. We're still using one or two Brentford players here and there, like the goalkeeper and Embuemo. They're going to be our best chances of survival again, alongside Sildero and Chetino, the two Uruguayans. Our two best players are injured. The absolute state of that, man. Karimo does you dirty sometimes, as we go into season three as massive underdogs again. How could they possibly have done it again? They've not only just finished in 17th by the skin of their teeth on 27 points again. They beat the drop by
by three points. Leicester City, Norwich and Sheffield United all getting condemned to the championship. It wasn't much of a high octane finish in terms of who would go down like last season. It was more tight at the top. Liverpool and Man City sharing 100 points, but it was the Liverpudlians taking out the Premier League title. This time in the FA Cup, we were one round away from reaching the semis and having a day out at Wembley, it was a 3-0 elimination to Everton in round six. Seems like our deep FA Cup run made up for our terrible stint in the Carabao Cup. 2-0 elimination in round two to Wolves. I need to check this. Who were our heroes for season three? Who kept us up in the top flight for the second season running? And it was the rise of Mustafa Mohamed, the Egyptian 24-year-old striker built like a brick. He was our top goal scorer with six goals and one assist to add to his tally. And then we had the Algerian side, Ben Rama. He managed to have a compelling season, four goals and two assists. Artem Dejuba, he might be, yeah, he is retiring at the end of this season. A big man rushing up top. He has headed to the retirement home at 33. He managed to bag three goals in his farewell campaign. Meanwhile, Brian Mbwemo really hasn't lived up to the hype from that first season in the championship. Three goals and three assists. Rodolfo Pizzato, another worthy campaign with three goals and five. And Jose Maria Sedero, the Uruguayan with three goals. Sebastian Szymanski with nine appearances, one goal and one assist. It's also another heartwell farewell for Mohamedou Bagioko, our right back, the Ivorian. I'm going to choose not to renew his contract as we're on the hunt for a brand new right back. Another season achieving Premier League survival retired superstars. The free agents team lose a few. However, we're going to gain a few once we head into season four. We're getting stuck into it to start off season four. Here's our first little batch of free agents we've managed to scoop up right now with Adil Mbiso, the 19 year old French center back, 71 overall. He's shown great potential. He's got great strength and jumping. Like I said, I'm not too sure if they're just random youth academy players spawned in the free agents. They've been released by their clubs or they're actually regen. Secondly, Carlos Carvalho could potentially be Vidal's regen. The Chilean center mid slash CDM is an exciting prospect valued at 1.5 million pounds as we've gone ahead and acquired Fabian Ardia, someone who I've actually had my eyes on for quite a while. I didn't really see fit to sign him. I've bitten the bullet come season four. He's valued at 1 million pounds, 19 at right mid. Rounded up that batch will be Juan Castellanos. Another right mid, this time he's Colombian. The South Americans, they just love being in the free agents, don't they? 81 acceleration, another exciting prospect on our hands. Now these next two free agents, they have a bit of context, a bit of backstory behind them. We have been lucky enough that the Luka Modric regen, Ante Kola, he spawned in the free agents valued at 5.5 million. An absolute bargain if you ask me. The 2018 Ballon d'Or winner, I'll take that any day of the week. He's going to be the next reincarnation of the Real Madrid Croatian. Ante Kola, welcome on in. And I think I found Dzuba's regen. Alexander Maradishvili. No editing here. I got that Russian surname on lock first time. We're continuing the Dzuba legacy long after he's retired. He's regen, 71 overall, 19. I'll definitely take him in the squad. I know we've got an abundance of strikers. However, it just had to be done. The Russian needs to live long in the memory of the free agents rebuild. And to cap off what has been a magnificent free agents transfer window, we go ahead. It's another center midfielder, Harry McGinley, nonetheless. Less. He's showing great potential at 64 overall. I've actually picked him up due to the fact of his versatility, really. He can play at right back and left back when we need him to. Great utility player. And the trend just had to continue, really. Another Cameroonian, an heir to Chetino's throne. It's Camilo Arias. It worries me that he doesn't have a potential status, but he's 70 overall, valued at 2.4 million pounds with 84 agility. Prove me wrong, Arias, but I don't think you can live up to this hype. We've switched things up tactically and formation-wise going ahead into Season 4. We've opted for that two-striker deployment system with Dezuba's regen and Bratz going forward. It's the master and apprentice getting licked up at centre-back with Chetino and Mbe So It's only taken us three years in the Prem, but we started to see a bit of improvement right here. Finishing in 14th, thoroughly beating the drop by six points. I got that excited that I just slammed my desk. It is Huddersfield, Burnley and West Brom all getting relegated. Meanwhile, we finish above Watford and it's Everton down in 11th. Now at the top of the table, it is Chelsea winning it out in one of the tightest title races I've ever seen. Domestic cup competitions don't really seem to bring us all too much glory and I'm not expecting much here today as we get knocked out in round four in the FA Cup to Aston Villa. How do the free agents go in the Carabao, you ask? Um, yeah, I don't have high hopes. This is probably an early elimination and right there, Sheffield won on penalties 5-4 in round three. It would actually be pretty sick to end off this rebuild with some silverware. I don't know whether we're taking them to Champions League glory or just domestic cup glory, but it'd be nice to guide this team into a position where they're a Premier League staple. Our signing of the season 
and it seems our top goal scorer, it's Mohamed Brat. We have a few strikers called Mohamed as the Frenchman. He scored 10 goals and 3 assists. Oli Watkins, a Brentford original with 9 goals and 2. Rodolfo Pizzardo with 9 goals and 10. He was definitely our marksman playmaker. Dejuba's regent, Alexander Maradishvili. Oh my god, this is an absolute mouthful, but 7 goals and 1 assist. And Embuemo still really hasn't lived up to that season 1 hype. And Sebastian Szymanski, 4 goals and 3 assists in 6 Premier League appearances. Always showing impressive numbers. Mustafa Mohamed now up to a respectable 80 with three goals this season. He can play anywhere up that right hand side. He's a handy man and it's the captain Wilmar Barrios with three goals and one assist. If season five's free agent transfer window can be as fruitful as season four, we're in for yet another cracking season. I'm keen to bring on season five. Our free agent transfer window this season, I'm not going to say it's underwhelming. We just prefer the quality over quantity this time around. Matthias Kachiabue. I can see him being that partner for Modric's regen in that two-man midfield. He's definitely got to be a regen of someone. Maybe Pastore, I'm not too sure, but he spawned in the free agents. He's on 21k a week. The South American free agents, they're just in brilliant supply at the moment as we move on down to Alexander Kiss. Now, there wasn't really any much reason behind why I signed him up. His last name is just Kiss. I could be reaching here, but a mid-table finish or maybe even a cheeky deep cup run would do me proud. Go on, lads. Show me what you've got. I am ready for this to be one of our best seasons yet. Keep in mind, we're not really close to the end of the season here. We've reached a Carabao Cup final. What an inspirational cup run it's been. And we have squeezed our way towards Wembley, now up against Liverpool. I can't believe this, boys. The free agents have done a madness. And now we have a chance for silverware in season five. And we're currently coming up against the league leaders and favorites for the league title right now in season five, Liverpool. We're going in with this team, a mix of the season one originals and the Youth Academy free agents we've managed to pick up along the way. Got Wallace starting in goal, Shetino leading from the back, Barrios the captain, and the strike partnership of Mohamed and Dejuba's regen. This is either going to be a fun day out or a cup final humiliation. I'm keen to see what we can come up with. It's a foggy afternoon here at Wembley as we compete for the Carabao Cup final. Yes, a lot of the big teams, they don't really rate this as silverware, but we have come from humble beginnings. I mean, free agents all the way to competing for domestic Cups. This has been a wild ride and we're basically now made up of just Youth Academy talents. Those ribbons on the trophy definitely need to be red. We are in for a big day out. Brentford fans, brace yourselves. And it's Liverpool's rumoured away kit. I don't know if that's actually their away kit for next season, but that is our starting 11. You all know the go. Daniel Milan, Danny Ceballos, Nabi Keita still at Liverpool. We've got Van Dijk, Joel Matip and also Alexander-Arnold and Alisson staying loyal to the Reds. Right, we have a lift off. It is just Zuba's regen getting us underway. Let's get this dub. What a tackle. Still dead or he still got it. He might be our aging Uruguayan, but he still has a good pass in him. And look at him go, Mohamed, our Egyptian striker. Built like a brick. And now he tried something fancy. Again, our right back wins the header. Back on over to Sidero. And it's Barrios with a beautifully timed ball into Dejuba's region. And it's our first chance. First goal for the Russian. And he's doing his master proud. The predecessor getting on the score sheet first here at Wembley. And it's a group celebration with that. The captain created that goal. The assist as the Colombian. A beautiful turn. Sets him up on a silver platter. And the Liverpool defense nowhere to be seen. Alisson beat out. And the man with the black and white boots. He might have a tucked in shirt. But he can still put him into the back of the net. And that's why we love him. Imagine a team of free agents beating Liverpool at Wembley. That would just cause football Twitter into a meltdown. And now, big ball inside. Sadio Mane stayed loyal to Liverpool over the years. He's put it through to Daniel Milan. And it's a finish and a half, a reply and a half from the Dutchman. Liverpool get back on level terms. And it's 1 1. They found their equaliser. Poor defending. And it's the inexperienced Impe So losing his man. Goalkeeper can't keep it out. And it's Daniel Milan through his leg. 1 1. Uh oh, big opening in our defense. Sadio Mane off the post. And open goal. Big block from MB So and again Navi Keita tries it's on your Milan for the second this time he's offside and we've been let off the hook as the Dutchman's gone and wheeled off in celebration get back onto the touchline son VAR saves us I mean the linesman's flag saves us and it's MB So keeping him offside Mohamed now works it through to Zajuba's regen he scored one can he set one up now over the top it will be oh my goodness that could have been the goal of the season the Uruguayan leaped up for a scissor kick volley and it wasn't to be just wide back on over to Mohamed the Egyptian 
He's taken on his Egyptian in Mohamed Salah. Can he take it past the goalkeeper? No, Sildero. Demanding a goal before half time. And Danny Ceballos through to Nabi Keita. Big save from Wallace. Oh my god, we are going to get a chance before half time. How much added time do you want, referee? He's gifted us another chance. Can we take it? And no, it's going to be Szymanski. High octane stuff to start off the first 45 minutes. I did not expect it. But we're 1 1 all tied up at the break. Cut inside for the through ball. Mohamed now, he's completely run past the ball. What's he doing? Mohamed, Mohamed can't turn quick enough. I mean, he's a brick. But it doesn't mean he's got the best agility. And now, the Juba's region a brilliant. Such deflected and over the bar by Matty. Making our first substitution. It's the Uruguayan legend. A club legend still dead or off for the Modric region. The Juba's region finds Mohamed. He's been... Oh, Mohamed gets stumped, taken down. Is that a WWE tackle from Virgil van Dijk in the box? How's that not a red card? He just completely went through the back of him. I was trying to do a drag back or some sort of skill move to get away from the Dutchman. And he's coming in hot. With a two-footer, he's dug his own grave there. And that's a, got a red card challenge written all over it. The man could have been killed. You know who it will be. The man that won the penalty. Mustafa Mohamed. Our fate lies in your hands today, sir. The number 27. He's deserved the goal or game. Can he be on the winning side? And no, Allison with a big save. Oh, he should have just stuck to the left. And he's bottled his one opportunity. Can he do it, though, from the corner? Can he redeem himself? And of course not, but it's Barrios with a wasted chance. And again, we offload quickly inside, moving the ball around with pace and menace. And it's Mohamed offloading to the right. Szymanski's run his socks off all game. And he cuts back in. It's Mohamed against Van Dijk, who should be sent off. And he's moved past him like he should have been sent off. And it's off Allison again. Are you kidding me? Off the post. But it's now Modric's region. Modric will unleash again. And Allison pulls it all stops to deny us of a 90th minute winner. We've felt heartbreak yet again. And just when you thought we had secured it. Well, that's it. Extra time to decide it. Even though I think we deserved it after the last few minutes of extra time. It's going the distance. Oh, it's straight to penalties, actually. Uh-oh. I have not brushed up on my penalty skills so far in FIFA 20. Here goes nothing, then. A chance for Mohamed to redeem himself. But first up to the plate is Dejuba. Dejuba's regen. I should say Dejuba's regen converts cool and calm. But now it's Mohamed Salah. Where's the Egyptian going? And it's going to be a chip. But Wallace denied. And again, we've kept out Liverpool. But now I want Mohamed to redeem himself. Into the bottom left we go. And he's absolutely smashed out. Top left. Top bins. And now Awonyi for Liverpool. For the chance to get them on the board. And he does so with a brilliant penalty. The Mexican left winger who didn't really contribute much in the game. But can he slot his penalty away? And it's denied. It's denied. I didn't even know if that went in or not, Mane. And it's back on level terms, boys. We've dropped our heads. Go on, son. Go on, son. Are you kidding me? I aimed that all the way right. And now... It is all off the bar from Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. Modric's regen now. It's either Modric or Rakitic. Now I've realized there could have been two options, but we'll go bottom left, bottom left, bottom left. No, I completely fucked that. It's Van Dyke doing it. We've missed three penalties in a row. Uh, it's still down to me, boys. It's all down to me. Big Virgil Van Dyke, and he'll win it for the free agents. They go home on penalties. And there we have it, the big Dutchman, who controversially, are, in my opinion, should have been sent off. Should have had an early ice bath, but it wasn't to be. And the captain wins it. An absolute bottle job from the penalty spot from the lads. A classic bottle job in the final, and we go home empty-handed. We quickly sim the end of the season, and just to finish off, we finish in 17th with Leicester, Sheffield, and Bristol all going back down, relegated, and we just survive again by three points. This is the team we've managed to build up and conquer. We haven't really conquered. If you guys want to try this challenge out for yourselves, go ahead. This has been our best performance throughout the season. It is Jujuba's region, nine goals and five assists for him. And it's his strike partner in Brat. The Frenchman managed eight goals and five. Mohamed with the penalty antics in the Carabao Cup final at Wembley. He bottled it, but he managed seven goals this season. Nonetheless, side Berrama with six goals and two. And the rest are free agents. I still think we have a few uh, Brentford players still within the mix. Wallace, bless his soul, couldn't keep a clean sheet, nor could he win that penalty shootout for us. But it wasn't his fault. It was down to me at the end of the day. And the free agents have come a long way in five years. Maybe it wasn't Champions League glory.
story we were after, it was more about the journey, less than the destination, and it proves that the free agents list is still a viable way of building up your squad, acquiring those assets for your team to really build them up to the heights you want them to be. My best advice, check the free agents list every single season, because you might find yourselves a few hidden gems and some characters for your squad. That has been one of the best teams we've been able to come up with in conjunction with real life free agents and free agents spawned within the game, alongside one bottle job with a Carabao Cup final loss. I hope Hopefully you guys did enjoy that one. It was a bit more of a tough one. A bit more of a challenging obstacle we had ahead of ourselves today. But if you did go ahead and enjoy, make sure to smack the like button down below. Hit subscribe. Turn on the notification bell if you want to stay up to date with all the content coming out on the channel. Follow me on Twitter. All the social links are in the description. Instagram, Twitch, Discord. Get involved, boys. As always, I've been BCHD. Have a great day. And I'll catch you all in the very next video.